welcome to Totality Town. It feels good to be back. I've taken a good bit of this year off so my wife and I could pursue our long-held dream of backpacking the Pacific Crest Trail, which runs over 2,600 miles from Mexico to Canada. The hike was wonderful in a host of ways, and we completed the trail, reaching the Canadian border on September 7th. The closest thing to a downside in all those months was missing the total lunar eclipse back on May 26th. Or did I? Uh, let's take a quick look back at that event before we talk about this century's longest partial lunar eclipse, which comes on November 1819. I actually took my DSLR camera and I hid it deep in my pack so my wife wouldn't see it until it was too late. I ended up carrying the camera for about 12 days before the eclipse, almost 200 miles, so that I could have a shot at imaging the total lunar eclipse. It happened on our first day officially in the Sierra Nevada, although the most rugged mountains were still several days ahead of us. We did manage to find a campsite where the moon would be above the horizon during lunar totality, and I set the alarm for 2.30 a.m. A little bit after 8 p.m., beautiful sunset, total lunar eclipse at uh, just after 4 in the morning. Sunset's over there. Sky Safari is telling me that the moon will basically be in those treetops, the ones that are burned out and dead, um, or it'll just barely be above those when lunar totality hits. So I'm probably going to be going up on on one of these low boulders, kind of like that guy there, to see what I am able to see and hopefully catch a bunch of great images of lunar totality tonight. Good morning and welcome to Totality Town. So we are here live on location in the High Sierra Nevada, well, just on the edge of it, um, and the lunar eclipse is already in progress but we have clouds so that's uh that's not the most exciting thing in the world however there is a nice big patch of clear sky off to the west in the direction that the moon should be moving well is moving and uh, it appears to be moving in the opposite direction so there is a chance that the moon will be clear of clouds by the time totality arrives in just over an hour. So I'm going to stay camped out on this hillside, hoping that there are no mountain lions nearby. I got spooked by one a couple of years ago, and this is kind of their territory. So uh, let's see what happens as the morning continues. The clouds didn't really seem to want to go away, so I eventually retreated to the tent and got a bit more sleep. When I woke again, the skies were beautiful, and so I scrambled back up the rocks. Thankfully, no mountain lions. Unfortunately, none of my photos really came out. It appears there is a vibration in my camera because what you see here is the best it could do despite working with a shutter release. I guess that's what happens when you just prop your camera up against a rock, but I couldn't hide a tripod from my wife. Meanwhile, uh, my friend back in Golden, Colorado was using my telescope to see what images he could get. He had to battle incoming clouds right at the start of totality, but he still did pretty well. So why get excited about the partial lunar eclipse on November 18th or 19th? The exact date, depending on your time zone. Well, the moon is going to get to about 97% eclipsed. Probably enough for there to be some coloration on the lunar disk, but not as dramatic as during a total lunar eclipse. However, if you look forward, we're going to have two total lunar eclipses in 2022, and that makes this November a good opportunity to get out and practice for those events. Experiment. Try a new imaging technique. Personally, I'll be testing high magnification images with the goal of creating a large mosaic, and if it doesn't work, well, at least I learned what not to try next year. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for a recap video of the night, and also look at my Instagram account for some photos I'll post there. If you're into special occurrences, as I mentioned earlier, this will be the longest partial lunar eclipse of the century. From start to finish, the moon is going to touch the Earth's umbra for 3 hours, 28 minutes, and 23 seconds. 
That's two minutes longer than any other just partial lunar eclipse that's going to happen this century. North American viewers will get to see the entire event, including the penumbral stages, and the moon will be fairly high in the sky the whole time. Australia and the Far East get to see the moon rise in the evening while partially eclipsed, and in a similar fashion, South America will see the moon set while partially eclipsed. The exact times are shown here. U1 marks the beginning of the partial eclipse, while U4 is when the partial eclipse ends. The times are shown as universal times, but here's a quick chart showing observing times for U.S. observers. By the way, if you're wondering when the longest total lunar eclipse of the century is, you've already missed it. That lunar eclipse took place in July 2018, with observers in Europe being treated to just shy of one hour and 43 minutes of totality. That's over 100 minutes. Lunar eclipses lasting 100 minutes or longer will only happen four more times this century, and they are all going to favor observers in the Southern Hemisphere. Thank you for joining me here on Totality Town. Please subscribe to the channel for previews of other upcoming eclipses, as well as a new series of episodes coming soon on solar observing.